One of the things I've learned over the years of spending time fishing in eastern Idaho is the people of the region, especially those in the sport of fly fishing, look after each other. I just got a hit on the strip. No matter where you fish, be it upscale lodges or resorts, or DIY RV or camping, the people you'll encounter here, those who choose to make Yellowstone Teton territory home, are nothing short of family. Fly fishing family. Coming up in this special episode of The New Fly Fisher, we're with the Wilsons and their widely extended family out of the Drift Lodge and Fly Shop in Island Park, Idaho. But most importantly, we're fishing with Pat. That's a nice sized fish. Absolutely fantastic. Mm. Nice. Oh my goodness, that's the kind of fish that makes stickers out of it. The new fly fisher is supported by Visit Idaho, Yellowstone Teton Territory. Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. Ooh. Pat Shaw spent seven years in the United States Army, working his way to the rank of Sergeant. He was deployed twice stateside working duty stations with the 1st and 2nd Infantry Division. He was also deployed to the Middle East in support of Operation Inherent Resolve, where he served the Army there for a full 10 months. Patrick Shaw has always been a force to be reckoned with. I first met Pat in 2019 at a party at the Drift Lodge. We immediately hit it off and became fast friends. I want you to get paid. That's what I tell all my clients. I'm, I'm your guide today. Today, we are guided by Pat and his family fishing in some of his favorite waters in Yellowstone National Park. Okay. We're We're hunting. Hunting. I want you to zip your we zipper. We can go down to the river. Feel better? Oh, yeah. I love filming, dude. I've never really been in like a sh like filmed, and that's like my goal in life. Can you hear me right now, probably? We can all hear you. Fishing with us are Pat's mom and dad, as well as a few guys from the shop. So what's up guys? We're here at Barnes 2 here in Yellowstone National Park. We're here with the Drift Lodge and the family. We're gonna get this party started. So hang tight, stay tuned, and let's get it going. Ooh, it's gonna be a warm one today. Straight forward first. Let's go baby. The thing is, we make things work no matter what. Yeah. And we're out here and we're gonna have a great time. Yeah. All right, be, hey, when you get in there, be safe. Good, good base, walk slow. Hey. Listen, if you fall backwards, I, hey, if you fall down, I want you to lean back and just, just fall down. yeah, and then all these guys right here, they're going to help you out. Yeah, they're, you unfortunately, I can't help you. A uh, year ago, I'd be able to, but right now I'm not going to be able to. But hey, if you fall back, just lean back and we'll get you out. I would start to the left of that rock. Yeah. Walk down. You see the water change, the yeah, current? Yeah. So this fast moving water, stand right in front of that and just give a, just swing them through. Just swing it through. Okay. So mom, I'm gonna teach you the wet load cast. Okay, so what you're gonna do, it's called a wet load cast. It's very simple. You're not gonna be doing a false cast. You got two bugs on, all right? What you're gonna do is point it down river. It's a two-step movement. You're gonna lift up and you're gonna cast straight ahead in front of you. 
what you're doing wrong is you're casting all the way to the back of you and there's no drift. So lift up one and flick it forward. Perfect. Mend that line. Mend it again. There, very softly. So you're picking it up off the water and rolling it over. There you go. Yep, perfect. All right, mend your line up and over above the water, rod tip down and following it through. So your, your, your dry fly is your indicator. So if that goes under, you're gonna lift up. We're not bass fishing. You're not gonna yank it out of their mouth. Perfect, love it. If you need to mend the line five times, do it. You wanna get your line straight as possible. It's all about presentation. Let that hunt longer than you think. Keep it in the water. I'm falling forward. Oh, no, I'm not. We're good. Thanks, bro. Said, oh, you got something. There you go. So <laughs> that was it. Yeah. All right, try that again. Yeah, fish on, baby, let's go. So you're pointing that rod tip at that bug. There you go. All right, let's take a few steps to the left. A few steps to the left. Shuffle. Very slowly, easy, take your time. All right, wide feet, get a good base. Straight ahead on the other side of the bank. There you go, that's good, that's good. Little movements will do a lot of change. Mend it again, mend it again. Hey, you're not doing what I taught you. Raw tip follow. Follow the, follow the tip. <laughs> this is how I talk to all my clients. I know, I just keep. You keep it up, I'm putting you on the bench on the wheelchair. That was a good cast. Mend the line. Yep, follow it exactly like that. Keep following it, keep following it, keep following it. Yep, like that. That's exactly what I want you to do. Hey, make sure you mend the line. Like I said, if you need to do it five times, do it five times. So what you're doing, you're like this. You need to fall it all the way through, like across your chest, wide feet. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Hey, <laughs> relax. I know you're excited when that happens. Hey, when that happens, rod tip up and just reel in. You tell me that. Things slow down, so we pack it up and head deeper into Yellowstone National right, Park. One, two, and three. That's good, that's good. Just a little bit, not a whole lot. Yeah, there you go, I'm good. And Pat insists on walking to the river. Yeah, that, that rain, it's, it's good, it's good now. I like this, this overcast. Pat won't talk about his time in the Army. He won't tell anyone what he saw, what he experienced, or what happened to him physically. That's fine. But he was going down a dark pathway of which he attributes fly fishing for turning his life around. But it was in 2022 when we were on a high mountain adventure together that we started noticing something wasn't quite right. 
So last year when we did our bike thing, yeah, I noticed that you were a little stumbly. Yeah. Tell me about what has happened over in the last year with respect to what I saw then and yeah, where we are today. Yeah, for sure. So about a year ago in 2022, me and Mark, we got together, we were doing some fishing and like he mentioned, uh, I was stumbling on my right leg. I uh, could not walk the best. I was still walking around and um, didn't know what it was. Just thought it was a knee injury I had in the service and uh, it ended up being um, neurological problems, uh, also known as MMD or ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. Yeah, it hit me for the last year it has progressed where I can't walk the best. I can I can shuffle around and get around, but um, I'm in a wheelchair now. And yeah, a lot of things has changed over the last year and it has changed the way I looked at life and people, connections. It's a blessing in disguise as how awful it is to get the, a disease what I have. It has opened my eyes to see the world different. How do you think this all went down? How do you think it happened? Do you have any idea? Um, I had a few traumatic brain injuries in the United States Army. I was exposed to chemical stuff on the Gulf in uh, the Middle East. They say it's service connected and I believe it. I believe it. I'm 29 years young and being 29 years young with a diagnosis of Lou Gehrig's disease is very, very rare and it is what it is, so. It's, it's a disease that does not have a specific timeline, but, you know, I'm gonna go try to go as far as I can and, you know, live it up and have a strong mindset and be positive, that's all I can do. There's no other option. There's no other option in this, but to keep going forward and and fighting for what I believe in. All the different types of flies we have. Family, my mom and my dad, um, they've done a whole lot for me. They're here for me by my side. My mom manages my appointments. She is the one that recommended me getting, uh, pushing to get wheelchairs, equipment, we're remodeling the home. They have been very supportive and been by my side with it. Whatever I need, they're there for me. And that's what family does, you know what I mean? Um, without my family, I don't know where I would be. Pat's outlook on his own life has changed, obviously, but his ALS diagnosis amazingly has given him new purpose. Guiding has changed my life. I've been guiding for the last three years. As soon as I got out of the United States Army, I went to guide school at Three Rivers Ranch down in Ashton, Idaho, and got taught the knowledge of not just fishing, but connecting with humans, people all around the United States and even the world, and teaching them the sport of fly fishing, teaching them what to do, and just being out on the river with good people. Guiding has changed my life and the people that I have guided over the years, I just want to say I, I appreciate every single one of you guys. You guys are all awesome and you guys have put a big impact on my life. Without you, I wouldn't be where I'm at. And I love all you guys. Well, one of the interesting things I've noticed, Pat, about today is, yeah, you can't tie knots any longer. Yeah, you can't run up and down the river nutting fish for people, but what you, you're doing for us in the river, sitting on the bank, if you've got a guide right. that's with you that can do that stuff, there's no reason why you can't continue this. Because I was down there, you're guiding your mom up here. My mother, yeah. And I was listening, I was learning stuff from you. I wasn't dangling long enough. Yeah. Right? So I let that, that limp snip let swing it out. Let it hunt. Let it hang. And let I, it sit and longer. And I a rainbow. More, more times So better. I don't think your guiding days are done. Yeah. And that's what my family said. I may be disabled, not be able to walk, like you said, net and fish, but I still have a voice and I still have knowledge 
of all my experience over the years in fishing this beautiful scenery here in Yellowstone National Park. So, so moral of the story, have great presentation, lay that line out and get a natural drift. The more it looks natural, the better it's gonna to be to catch fish. And I learned that from experience over the years, so. But through it all, Pat's love of life, his infectiously positive attitude towards his own mortality is something we can all learn from. People don't hesitate to help, and I just, the world needs that, you know? That love and support, and it's, it's just amazing, so. Pat lives large and loves. Oh boy, does he love unconditionally. Yeah, was that all right? good? That's great. Here, give me a hug. I'll give you a hug. Yep, love you. Like I said, I won't say goodbye. You never, you never know what life's gonna throw at you. That was a healthy young U.S. Army veteran out of the Army starting a fishing career. I was gonna do this forever as a guide. You never know what's gonna happen to you. You never know. Check on your loved ones. Go adventure. Tell your family you love them. Cause you never know. But I'm strong. I'm a fighter. So I'll get through this. That's it. Idaho Fish and Game have worked and continue to work to make many of the lake and river access points for anglers accessible. With boarding docks, fishing docks, compliant restrooms, and picnic areas, many anglers who are experiencing barriers to access in their day-to-day -day lives can find fishing opportunities within the state. In an attempt to keep pat fishing, Drift Lodge and Fly Shop, who happens to be an accessible lodge and fly shop unto itself, has started to install in partnership with Idaho Fish and Game, an accessible fishing dock at Henry's Lake. A lake world famous for incredible brook trout, cutthroat, and hybrid trout angling. After yesterday's adventure in Yellowstone National Park, Pat needs a well-deserved rest. So Drift Lodge and Fly Shop hooked us up with Dave Bess from Mad River Drifter Guide Service. Well, I started in Jackson Hole in 1984 and I've been here since the early 90s, so it's been a long time. You still love it? Oh yeah, I don't need, I don't really need to do it, you know, to make a living, but I just enjoy it. Uh, at the top of the ackle necks that you never use, when you get a little blinder, you learn to Use your fingers as a funnel to thread that little tip. I had to have him do it the other day. <laughs> I didn't have my readers with me. It was like 10 minutes trying to get the damn thing. They figured this out for me. And 5X through a hole. I can't even no, do that you'll learn to use. So there's, you learn to use your fingers as a funnel. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. actually works. We are good. Good to go. Today, we're fishing the Madison River just outside of the park. The Madison River is considered a blue ribbon trout stream formed in Yellowstone National Park at the confluence of the Firehole and the Gibbon Rivers. It's a destination river for anglers in eastern Idaho and southern Montana and around the world. A gradual drop from Quake Lake, the section we are fishing is often called the 100-mile riffle with river features changing ever so slightly over its gradual elevation drop. Can I hop in? You bet. And we can't fish until we get, get underneath the, the bridge. With put-in and takeout ramps along the river, anglers can choose length of float trip or walk and wade day by day. Madison is often billed as the 100-mile riffle. It's, there is nowhere on the whole river where the entire river comes to a hole. It's a riffle all the way. 
I think a lot of it is a challenge. I've often thought to myself, if you could go out every day and catch 30 or 40 fish, it would probably lose its allure eventually and you'd do something else. This is really a challenge. It's intense, always watching, always aware. It forces you to be able to read the river, read depths. It, it will essentially test every skill that you've developed. We're gonna get past these couple of guys right here. You know, the Madison is, it's, it's one of the most picturesque, beautiful rivers that I've ever seen. And of all the opportunities I've had to go elsewhere, Madison is where I've decided to land. And Madison is very conducive to a, a family experience. I have a lot of husband and wife, father and son come. And it is more so the total experience of being here opposed to simply saying, I'm gonna catch 40 fish. It is really a nice river in that sense. It's a total experience. There's always wildlife, birds, eagles. And as we've seen, there's not a lot of traffic. It's not you know, overused by any means. That's the drift we want right there. Dark dry fly hatches. All the aquatic insects will come off starting about mid-June. And they'll last until they're perhaps the first part, mid-August. Mid and they will last right into the terrestrials. Once all the salmon flies have died out, we get hoppers, ants, and beetles, which is what we're fishing now. Now, I can't see that little ant, so am I fishing the hopper drop? Yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. It's more of a, you know, the hopper certainly will act as a strike indicator, but that little ant, you know, an ant's not a notoriously good swimmer anyway. Right. They kind of bob around in the film. The fish holding areas are not very well defined. They're very, very subtle. And the very intricate little, little current seams, change in depth, change in, in the color of the bottom or the substrate is essentially the key to, to success. Are you seeing any mutants here? Any what? Mutant stones? Yes. So We're kind I of at the tail end of them right now, but, we, but we, that's a great hatch here. We have a lot of those. So I can skitter this a little bit, or do you want me to dead drift it? A twitch doesn't hurt. You know, that's, that's another one of the things that, you know, folks try to make it a dead set rule on how far apart the dropper needs to be. Well, fish are accustomed to seeing insects clustered together. Yeah. They don't necessarily ever make long, steady movements, two to three feet, or even a foot. And that's why the drag is so bad. But a little twitch never hurt a thing, you know, fish are used to seeing that kind of movement. Mid-river gravel bars, great area. You see a shallow gravel bar and it drops off into deeper, darker water. Yeah. Everybody I fish with fishes the bank. And I always wonder about the middle of the river, especially shallow gravel bars. Absolutely, yeah. Right, because I've had some great success with giant brown trout in a foot of water, <laughs> right? In the middle of nowhere. I like mid-river structure, especially gravel bars. I like uh, gravel bars are off, will have finer cobble. And I think that enhances the insect life also. Rather than one enormous boulder, there's a lot of small cobble. Uh, mid-river gravel bars will also, it, it's almost stop the water as it, as it swirls around them. The current speeds up, there'll be rocks, and then the bottom where it comes back together, classic little seam there. There's an uh, enormous amount of structure in a mid-river gravel bar opposed to the bank. One of the big challenges and one of the things that adds to the allure is being able to hit that little small target, a four inch, five inch current seam at 30 or 40 feet, rather than just throwing it in an eddy along the bank. And it's, that challenge does add a lot. But it's a lot of fun too, isn't it? Oh, it is. <laughs> It is a lot of fun. <laughs> this is so fun. I, lo I love this. This is the greatest way. <laughs> but you cover a lot of water very efficiently. Nice rainbow, huh? Yeah. Fun thing about these is they don't just come right in, do they? No. Yeah. 
All right, nice fish to start the day, Dave. Oh, he's, it looks like he's unhooked already. Yeah. Unless he wrapped. He wrapped the hand around. He's good. Out. And anytime you can get one of these on a hopper, that is money. <laughs> that is fun. All right, we'll let him go. We can carry on. So that's the fly that that rainbow ate. Nice hopper pattern. Uh, rides lower in the water and um, and no, but but that fish came out of a place where we wouldn't expect it to be. Exactly. But you fish very differently. <laughs> that's a well, compliment. That's, that's a, a compliment. True. You know, there are uh, one of the first things I tell folks are. I'll have you fishing in places that would seem very counterintuitive, not in a, in a specific spot. Like that fish, for example, came out of water. You would have never fished there. No, it's moving fast. Normally. Fast water. Fast water. But underneath, you know, you picture that what's underneath, there's a phenomenal amount of structure out in the river. Mm -hmm. Rocks, different kinds of current seams, different water depths, and nobody fishes that. Right. Everybody's pounding the banks. Everybody's pounding the banks. You know, and like I said before, I'm not a fan of getting right up within three inches of the bank. Stay on the water a little bit. Yeah. Until so, that's cool. Yeah. That was really neat. That was fun. <laughs> not again. <laughs> oh, we will. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And the Madison River has three to 4,000, some stretches up to 5,000 fish per mile. And it's very prolific, it's not planted, it's not stocked, it's, it's very well cared for. The fish population is very healthy. There's a, there's a lot of biologists doing a lot of work, that, you know, a lot of good work as far as enhancing the fishery. The Madison Foundation does a lot of good work and, and enhancing the fishery, there's, it's, a, it's a big focus on conservation. It's really well thought out. Ooh, that's the one. So we're in a unique situation here where um, to get an effective drift on these hoppers, this hopper and this beetle, you need to perform a reach cast or a Belgian cast, which means that you actually reach your rod upstream before the fly lands. Um, it's a great cast to learn. It gets you into a lot more water that's fishy, but there's going to be an occasion where your flies are actually drifting behind your fly line. And that's when you can do something called a stack mend. So I'm going to show you what a stack mend is. You cast upstream kind of 45 degrees, and as your line gets to perpendicular to yourself, you stack the line above the flies which repositions them and allows that fly line to go straight out and you don't get that belly in the line. If you do get a belly in the line and a fish eats when you have a belly in the line, then it's a sweep set as opposed to a strip set or a lift, simply because you've got water pressure on the line that as you sweep it across, it will cause the fly to come tight in the fish's mouth. So, stack bend, cast it out, and as your flies get perpendicular to yourself, throw it upstream, reposition your flies, adjust your slack, and then you can feed out as you need to get that dead drift of a beetle, and in this case, a hopper. Eat it. Right there, yep. When those big brown trout come up slowly and they turn and they look you in the eye and they go <laughs> Ooh, that was Ooh. fish. Beetle eater. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Look at that. Holy. Get out of there. That was a good eat. That was a very cool eat. Big rocks right in front of us. I'm gonna take his hard left. See if... So we gotta navigate some, some boulders here. So when you do that, keep the line tight with a high rod so that those lead, your leader and your tippet does not touch 
anything in the river bottom. And once you get into safety, once you're safe, then you can start playing the fish. But you gotta keep it tight. As soon as they're slack with these barbless hooks, the fish is gonna spit it. Now we switch things up a bit. We put a beetle on instead of an ant on the dropper fly. And uh, we've seen more action on the, on the beetle than we have on even the hopper. Nice job. Good fish. That's fun. You know, fishing river structure is unique. Usually I'm used to pitching these hoppers and droppers to the bank, but we're in the middle of the river here targeting river features. So riffles, seams, wave trains, back eddies, and you always have to be watching, especially with two flies, because you never know, that, that ant is tiny. So always watching, always watching, and, and with these rainbows, it's all or nothing. They're just committing right away. It's a lot of fun. All right, we're gonna let this guy go. He's he's met us long enough. Time cool. to go back to your business. Very nice. As an angler in, in a river like this, when you hook a fish in fast water, there's no panic, right? No, no. Be calm, enjoy it. Yeah. You know, just keep it tight. Tight line, no need to horse it. We have a lot of room to go. If they run upstream, you can turn it side to side, downstream, we're moving downstream. Yeah. It's, uh, Enjoy the fight. Yeah, that was there's, a fun There's fish. no hurry. Yeah, that was a fun fish. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I mean, we're down, what are we? We're a couple hundred yards, 150 yards down river. Yeah, start rowing back up then. <laughs> we'll, go, <laughs> we'll go get another one. <laughs> It amazes me how these fish are not boat shy at all. No, right? I think if they shied from every boat they saw, they'd starve to death. I mean, because they'll, they'll eat right at your rod tip. Oh, yeah. One thing I've learned fishing here is um, the wind's gonna blow. And in order to get that dead drift of these terrestrials, you need to manage your line so that um, the wind isn't blowing your fly line around and moving those bugs everywhere. So one of the things you can do, which helps big time, is to actually point, bring your slack in and point your rod down into the water column as close as you can without touching it so that the wind doesn't have a chance to grab your fly line and move it around. If you're to hold your line up like this, the wind has an opportunity to wreak havoc with it and actually pull those flies right out of the water. So bring in your slack, put your rod tip down and get ready for that strike. It's still gonna be a, a trout set. You're gonna have a little bit further to go, but you're gonna present those flies in a way that those fish are gonna appreciate a lot more than if they're blowing all over the place and actually coming out of the water. So good. Yeah, good shot, great drift. Fish need to wake up. I don't get no prettier than that. Should put my glasses on for this. <laughs> Yes, it is. Mm, just in case. Sign of things to come. Was that a fish, you think? It looked like a strike, but going through that wave train, it was tough to tell.
mind. You want to be that way. Yeah. He's going to give you a run, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Got to love it when they run to the middle of the river. So this fish took the ant, took the dropper, little size 18 red ant, and it was actually sunk. Um, so I didn't see the eat, but I did see the, the hopper drop. And that's the purpose of this, you know. Got to figure out where they're eating in the water column. This was just in the surface film. Didn't see it. We got ourselves a nice little rainbow on here, it looks like. Yeah, great colors on it. You know, I was just asking Dave if we were in the right zip code, if we were, if I was fishing in the right lanes, because I missed one fish already, maybe two. And uh, fishing seams, fishing structure um, in the middle of the river is, it's, it's an interesting game. It's a lot of fun, but your confidence has to, you gotta be confident in what you're doing and where you're placing your flies. Nice, make it happen. It's a thin fish, long fish. Perfect. Anteater, gotta love it. All right, we'll get him unbuttoned and let him go. <laughs> Here. Thanks, buddy. Good fish. Very good. You know, my earliest memories of fishing personally or with my grandfather, who's been gone for a long time. And I've come up here with my grandfather and my dad, and now I bring my son and my grandsons up here with me. So this has been multi-generation, been a very special place for my family and where we've decided to come and my family and my, my older married children still come here with me. Drift Lodge and Fly Shop in Island Park, Idaho is home away from home for many traveling anglers from all over the U.S., Canada, and the world. When the wind catches the line, it messes with the fish probably, huh? They pride themselves in offering family-friendly guide services throughout many waters of Yellowstone National Park. There's been some fish rising over there, but it's all the way across there. As well as choice rivers into Montana. You give mom a thumbs up? Yeah. Today, we decide to take some of the Drift Lodge Fly Shop family and friends on a fun day of fishing in Yellowstone National Park. <laughs> I just don't want to lose, that's the only fly you got, isn't it? It doesn't matter if you're a beginner fly angler or a seasoned veteran. The Drift guides are excellent at what they do and know the surrounding waters intimately. Think I should do the B and B? I uh, uh, yeah, give it a whirl. I'm gonna tie on uh, Spanish on this one. The main thing is this is this is heaven. I mean, yeah, there's there's no other place like this. I mean, there's places that have the same stuff, but I mean, there's no other place you can go and you can go to, you know, catch huge uh, hybrids, uh, big Yellowstone cuts. I mean. Uh, it's, it's hard to beat the, the size of the, the Yellowstone cuts here. It's a fisherman's paradise and it's, you know, one of the most beautiful places in the world. And I'm a little biased, but uh, that's, that's, my, that's my take on it. I have been coming to Island Park for about 16 years now. When I met my husband, we came out here and I just fell in love. It's beautiful. So everything about it, all the trees, the weather, it's incredible just to be out here. We try to come here usually at the beginning of June um, when the kids get out of school. We get away from the hot summers in California. It gets, you know, 115 degrees over there. We come out here, have a high of 85 and it's just gorgeous. That almost looks like a caddis imitation. But I mean, it's the same colors and the right size, and that's really all that matters. Like this is, I mean, pretty similar, so. I came out west last year for a guide school and fell in love with the place. I reached out to Drift Lodge and they were kind enough to accept me. I think that the Drift Lodge prides themselves, and I'm very proud to call myself part of that family, but prides themselves in creating a family atmosphere and making sure that everybody feels comfortable and welcome in their home. It's not just a fly shop, it's not just a fishing or guide outfit. It's truly a family, you know, and the whole property is a home for everybody that needs it. You're fine, you okay? Okay. 
At the Drift Lodge, it definitely is based around family. We all consider ourselves, you know, a big family there. And we always look out for each other. So that's number one, it's always family first there. Um, a lot of the people there, I mean, I've met some of my best friends in this past two years that I have no doubt that will be friends for life. Oh, there I go again. Oh, gosh. That was a fish. I, that, was, that was a fish. I don't know what, what kind it was, but it was a fish. I could, I could just, I could. Up here we're gonna have brown and rainbow, mostly. Yeah. 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 There we go. Finally. Finally. It's a little rainbow, huh? Yeah, little guy, you got it. I just started fly fishing this year. This was my first year ever attempting it, so that was fun. That was a different experience. I liked it. I had never waded out into a stream before. I'd never stream fished, so that was really exciting. I, I enjoyed it. It was a little cold, but <laughs> got through it, and it was fun. It was a really good experience. Man, when all those birds started taking off, I was like, fuck, what's coming? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep your head on a swivel out here sometimes. Yeah, we're going to walk up, dude. God, that is beautiful. I think it's beautiful. I love it, especially being this close to the park and being able to guide in the park, I think is a fantastic opportunity that I wouldn't trade for anything. As far as scenery, it's the best. I mean, I don't think I've been to a more beautiful place to fish. Good fish. That's a good fish. You need a net? I don't know. Yep. Coming. Nice. Nice. Bo. That's a good fish for this river. Ricky, we've seen huge wind, rain, hail, snow. And now it's calmed down a bit. That's a lot of fun. Wild rainbows, perfect. <laughs> it was off. Thanks, nice one, brother. That was fun. And I could hear them still feeding too. Oh yeah. My glasses are all dirty. What? My glasses are dirty from the snow and rain. I found Drift Lodge through my father-in-law. He lived up in Island Park for like 12 years and just in the neighborhood area, became friends with Mike Wilson and then, and then we began a relationship after that, after coming up and fishing, getting my fishing license and flies and all that stuff at the shop. What? Mom's got one. Got you can get here. Cool, I'm coming. You can just take your time getting out. Here, you help you. Okay. And then Mike had heard that we, me and my wife and daughter, were moving up in the area, and um, we started working for him. Oh, nice, Mama! <laughs> then the water. Me and everyone in our family, we just love the outdoors, and obviously the. Drift Lodge is, is based around the outdoors. You know, everyone coming to see the park, everyone that's fly fishing. Uh, we spend most of our time outside. Oh, good job. Nice, you wanna release it? Beautiful little rainbow. 
my wife works there too, Carly. Um, yeah, it's just an all around good crew and we're all, yeah, we love it. Beautiful. Love you. Too low, keep it up. Okay. And we try to get more and more people to come out here with us, all of our friends and family and stuff, so that they can spend the time with their kids because we just cherish every moment that we have out here with them. It's, it's definitely the lifelong memories that you can make and um, you're outside spending the quality time together versus you know watching movies or playing on iPads and things that all the kids like to do these days, so it's great. It's a family for anybody that comes through that door needing help or refuge or whatever it may be. And I think that's why they have so much success is because they're always willing to lend a helping hand to people that need it. What, you got one? You got one? Hold it tight. And then you pull this. This. Pull it in. Yep. You gotta strip it in so don't hold it. I can do much. it. Yep. You should net it for. How's it feel? I don't know. Is it fun? Yeah, whoa. Oh, it's a nice. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, look at that. Daddy, hold that. What kind yep, of fish is it? A brookie? No, this one's a brown. That's yep, a brown trout? Brown, yeah. Yeah, you want to show them? Good job, Leah. Oh, nice. Can you get them in the water? Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Good job. Whoa. Oh, no. Okay, we can put them back in the water. Yeah. Hi, fishy. Starting with Carly's family, my wife's family, um, with Leah, it'll be the fifth generation fly fishing. So we're just trying to keep that tradition and keep it going as long as we can. We love it. Oh, look who it is. Film this guy, film this guy, film this guy. Ask him some questions. Bailey. Bailey. There's a person. Hello, camera. It's our final day fishing with Drift Lodge and Fly Shop and our final day with Pat. So here at the Drift Lodge, we got a lot of selections of flies. Um, you stop by, come through, and we got basically everything you need. Uh, nymphs, dries, hoppers, streamers. He happens to have a couple of army buddies come to stay with him for a few days to visit. Let that line load in the back. Naturally, Pat wanted to take them fishing. Okay, I want to see you lay it out straight, okay? So lay it out and drop it. Drop, like what you said, point my rod, right? You're right. There you go, let it go. Draw tip down, draw tip down. Okay. I decide to give them their space and sit down with Pat's mom and dad, Jamie and Mike Wilson, overlooking Henry's Lake. Where are you guys parking? We can just meet you there. Uh, just by the bridge on Palm's Lodge. Okay, yeah. So past the bridge and then go to the left. Okay, yeah, yeah by the town. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, by the ranger station. All right, yep. That was sick. Pat has never met anybody he never liked. We got a guy kind of passing us up and we got a car coming up, so hopefully we don't cause a wreck. He's very good at sharing his love of the outdoors and his enthusiasm for what he's doing with our clients like no other. You yep. help? Yeah. So, you know, Patrick was getting out of the military he did get a call from the family business, hey, because he trying to decide what he wanted to do getting out of military. And I was like, will you, are you, will you consider coming back and helping with the family business? Yeah, I got it by yeah. myself, yep. That transition back in um, civilian life, I think it's really rough. He did come out um, disabled. Yeah. And just trying to though. navigate where he's gonna be, what's he, what is he gonna do and be in life? I got it, I got it, bro. You don't need it, you don't need to help me. And then his I willingness to come back to the family business. So in that environment, hanging out with the other guides, I mean, he would, they would take him out. 
It was his safe place. Yeah, it became his safe place. And you could see the gradual improvement mentally, um, wanting his love for outdoors. I mean, he's he does have that. But first, before we start, I want all you guys to take a second. I want you to look out in the river. And I want, to, I want you, you guys to tell me what you see. Bit of a different ripple there. Okay. What else? Oh. Yeah, the little guy jumping. So we got some activity, okay? Yeah. The pat was going all the way to the top. Um, his guide skills, he built and he built the love of fishing through wanting to help us, wanting to help others learn. So before you go into the river, you're always going to kind of like read the water and kind of see like where the fish at, what do you see, what hatch is going on, okay? So I'm gonna hand all these bugs out to you guys. You guys are gonna put these on. And then when, when you're putting them on, just kind of look out in the river and see like what's going on. Because if you see start like a five fish jump back to back, you're gonna wanna go over there and see what you can get, right? You always hear the phrase how um, healing fishing is and helps everybody. I've seen, you know, heard it. But to see it in my own son, those first couple of years after the military and watching him heal from that experience um, as a mom was an aha moment. How special the gift that we are giving to others living out here, just seeing his health heal, just mentally, yeah. physically, yeah. Uh, and then him catching the bug. These guys, uh, these are my good friends, all three of them. Um, they have never fly fished there. Um, Jason's from here, Bailey right here. He's from here, he fishes often. Um, but Jason, most importantly, he's, he's from here and he hasn't really fly fished and experienced the, the fly fishing experience out here. And he's from here, so it's pretty magical. You got Tyler over here, my buddy I served with in the United States Army. Um, I haven't seen him for 10 years. He's from uh, uh, the West far west so he uh he never really fishes um and Rillin. uh we're gonna see what we can Rillin. do ah uh, okay what'd i do too tight okay let him fight for let a second fight. that okay, was a so, larger fish so i need to i need to tire him out was then. it moving he was moving yeah okay it was a fish so i need to tire him out then yeah okay don't yet for so probably 10 years before we wound up up here, I was looking at uh, business opportunities. I wanted to be involved in outfitting of some sort, big game, fishing. It, it's been a passion of mine. It's something I wanted to do. And I wanted to be in a more rural community. We've been adding since we came up here in 2011. We started with an old dilapidated restaurant and five cabins and we have built and remodeled and added the fly shop to where now we're, we have the 15 rental units in the fly shop and we've developed areas for our employees to stay too so we can have, maintain our atmosphere. I mean, our staff, because they all live together, are very close with each other. My start in fishing and fishing with grandparents on the side of a lake, bait fishing, that's where my family atmosphere has been developed from. I, I grew up from the time I can remember fishing with family and, and in any way that they felt comfortable. I think it starts, you know, us being a family owned business. We have respect for each other. They see that. And it's important to us to show them the respect or family oriented. We've had all of our boys work for yes. us. We always tell them, welcome to the family. <laughs> I want to see every time. All right, men the line, men the line, men the line one more time. Yeah, it all line. started in May of 2022. I was guiding. I was a fly fishing guide for three years after the service of the United States Army. Um, and this is my story about ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. I remember walking across um, 
our property asking him, you know, is, is something else going on? And he started talking about his hands. And that, that was the end of season last year. And that's kind of when I was like, oh, something weird's going on. All right, Tyler, give me four more casts. Come back in, we're gonna switch your bug out. I knew something was wrong, but I didn't know what it was. By November, he's falling once a day. He's like, hey, I fell. I don't, my, I don't know, I turned wrong. I mean, got up in my truck and I fell. I was like, what is going on? It was crazy. And so a year later, a lot of testing and hospitals visits down in Salt Lake City, Utah. We went hard with the doctors. I mean, it's, it was hard to get people to listen to us and listen to him, you know, through the BA. But once we got the right people, they started listening and then we kind of knew. All right, guys, you're going to take turns casting. One's going to cast, one's going to stop because you guys are next to each other, okay? With Lou Gehrig's disease, there's no cure. Um, but every day they're making new drugs, research, and what you gotta have is hope, so. But I just wanna give a, like, a big awareness to out to the ALS community out where I live here in Island Park, Idaho, 17 miles away from Yellowstone, beautiful Yellowstone National Park. And I just wanna give a big awareness to anyone that's going through this that um, there's hope with friends, family, and you gotta keep moving no matter what. You gotta keep trying, you gotta keep living and have hope and that's all you can do. There's really nothing else you can do but stay strong. And um, thought he had a fish on. <laughs> I've had it for more than a year now and I can still stand up. Just can't really walk the best. Legs shake, um, symptoms have progressed. I, I honestly, this is a hard subject. We grasp at hope. Um, if you're educated on this, it's 100% fatal. Average is two to five years. We grasp at hope. And it's why it's so important and that it, there is awareness and so many young people are getting this disease, you know. It's the last thing you want to be educated on, but once you start educating yourself on it, it's... it's he, deser he, deserves he deserves a chance to experience he deserves a chance. life as he wants it, as long as he can, and we will do whatever we can to make sure that he's engaged and loving what he's doing. He sees it as a way like he does with his fishing. A gift. It's a gift. He wants to help others and he will use where he's at in his condition to the best to obviously make himself better but if he can help others so it, it, it's very important to patrick he he craves being that person to help others and not worry about himself. No. Fish on, let's go. A little crises no longer mean anything. Yeah. We can put them behind us and move forward. And it's because of Pat. It's because of him, so. guy <laughs>
<laughs> She's camera shy. I want to take this opportunity to thank everybody at Drift Lodge and Fly Shop for their hospitality. Mike and Jamie Wilson for allowing us to tell this story. And most importantly, Pat Shaw for allowing us to look through the window of his world. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Visit Idaho. Yellowstone Teton Territory. Scientific Anglers. Trout Unlimited. WeatherTech Canada. <laughs>